لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله بسم الله الحمد لله السلام عليكم Peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show, where we try to bring you a new show every week, trying to help you understand Islam and Muslims. And we've been talking about, with our next guest, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, who is a former Christian preacher, whose father was also a minister. His whole family accepted Islam. And he is trying to help us and help you guys understand Islam. He goes around the world giving wonderful talks and speeches and we've been talking about the prophets what they lived what they called people to and we talked about Adam we talked about Idris we talked about Noah and we left off at Abraham now you can see our prior shows at thedeanshow.com under Sheikh Yusuf Esses's special section just click on there and if you didn't catch the previous shows you can go there so you can get to where we are and what we're talking about today. So when we come back, we're going to continue talking about the prophets, their lives, what they called the people too, when we come back here on The Dean Show. Dean. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah La ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum, salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for being with us again. It's nice to be back on the uh, You know, when I come up the elevator today, I was thinking that if this place gets any taller, it's going to be close to the paradise itself. We <laughs> get a shortcut here. <laughs> sure. You don't get nosebleeds up this high, do you? No. <laughs> okay, I just wondered. I didn't know. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you here with us on The Dean Show. We've done many shows with you, and people can go to the special sh section that you have on thedeanshow.com where they can see all the other prior shows, and especially these shows that we're doing the series about the prophets. We talked about Adam. We talked about... Noah and Abraham and we talked about the way of life that they were on that they all called the people to not worship worship what's in the creation but worship the one who created the creation the God Almighty alone let's continue off continue on where we left off and that was talking about Abraham when we were talking about the prophets what we were talking about is uh, as you said what we, what they called people to do as far as the way they ran their lives yes how do, you, how do you run your life? Because this word in Arabic is deen. deen. That's your show. is called the deen show, the way of your life. Mm -hmm. And everybody has a deen, whether or not they're a believer. Because it, it doesn't mean religion. As some people mistakenly translate it, it means your way. And there are many people that have no religion, they have no belief, but they still have their way that they go about doing things. This is their deen. Mm -hmm. So the deen show here that you're using people need to understand that you're talking about the dean of the prophets the way of the lives of the prophets in particular prophet muhammad being the last and the final messenger peace be upon him the succession that they come in really isn't as important i think as knowing how each one of them dealt with the type of problems they were faced with yes if we moved uh, forward just a little bit on the subject of Abraham. I don't want to get too far away. That he has a relative by the name of Lut, mm -hmm. which we pronounce Lot with one O. It becomes if you put two O's, it would have been Lut. Yeah. But they put one O, and, and now today we pronounce it Lot. But the prophet Lut, alayhi salam, peace be upon him. And by the way, we we didn't mention this before, but after every time we say the name of any prophet, we're supposed to say, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. Alay salam, alay salam, uh, or uh, was salama, something that would indicate that we're giving this distinction to them. Yes. And Lut, as a prophet, was one who didn't have scripture. Now, we said Abraham did. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use that term we used in the first program, we said super special human, yeah. that would be Abraham would be super special because not only he was a prophet, but he had scripture. 
In the case of Lut, he didn't have scripture, but he was a prophet because he called to this right belief by divine inspiration. Mm -hmm. Now at his time, the problem that he ran into was that his people were disobeyed in him and they were engaged in some things that were outside of legal marriage, not right to do. And they weren't married, but they were having these things that they did. And it's enough to say that. And so these people are called the Kalmalut, the people of Lut. Yes. They were bad. They were disobedient. And when he called them to the right way, they wouldn't listen. Mm -hmm. And without exception, they were all really bad people in these things that they did. They lived in a place which we call Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. And this is a famous place. And today it is said that the Dead Sea is sitting on top of the very city of Lut. And that if you dive down there, you would find it. There's so much uh, salt there, though. It's, a, it's more than even the Salt Lake, you know where Salt Lake City is, that everything is very buoyant. And uh, there are people who have done some diving there and tried to do some uh, excavation to try to get more information about what's really there. Mm -hmm. For us, it's enough just to know that there were a people who were disobedient. We don't need to know for sure, were they really right there? Did, it, did water really overtake them? How were they destroyed? Uh, what's important to know is that they were destroyed because of their disobedience. And not just destroyed in this life, mm -hmm. but they'll be in a horrible way in the next life as yes. well. What we learned in the first program, and every program we've talked about, is that a human being is a sinner, without exception. Even our prophets, they made some sins, not major sins, though. Never would we attribute a major sin to them, but they made mistakes, human mistakes, mm -hmm. wrongdoings. We mentioned that about Jonah, you remember? Yes. And Jonah in the whale said that all the glory is to Allah, and he extolled the greatness of Allah, and then he said the wrongdoing, why well, I'm in my condition now, is because of what I did to myself. I'm the wrongdoer. So we find that prophets, even Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, I say astaghfirullah, Allah forgive me, more than a hundred times a day. So we see that all of us are sinners, but there is a way to be forgiven that doesn't require some un unbelievable gymnastics of thinking, you know, mental uh, stretch of the imagination that you can't comprehend, or nor does it require for us to do something that is bloodletting or anything like that, but it's a matter of being really sincere in your repentance and saying that uh, I'm the wrongdoer and I need to be forgiven for it. Mm -hmm. Tell us how do we equate, because we take this information from authentic sources. Mm -hmm. We don't make things up according to our desires. But when well, we, we see... hope not to. That it, people still give their interpretation of things. Yeah. You, you, you will never get away from people, even if you said, I only want you to quote the Quran. Yes. And if I quote the Quran, you can say, well, see, he didn't give us anything of his own opinion. That would be a lie. Because unless I quoted the Quran from the very first word to the end, mm -hmm. in this case, you could say, well, he just quoted the Quran. But by choosing verses to recite and then choosing what order to recite them in and how I put emphasis on what I'm reciting, I can still give my uh, emotion to that. And maybe you'd perceive that one way or the other. Tell us from what we see mentioned about the prophets, Lut, for instance, okay. in the Bible, and some of the other prophets, now when you compare what's being taught to us in Islam, what do you take from that and what do you leave alone? Well, one of the things about Lut, for instance, is that when the angels came to him, uh, we have the same story in Islam, that the angels came to him and they were very beautiful and handsome-looking men. Uh, they, they took this kind of form. Then the people of Lut wanted to come and do bad things with them. Yeah. And he refused to let them do that. Now, this would be the same. But then when Lut leaves, he goes out a certain distance. And as he's going out, the Bible says his wife turned and looked back and became a pillar of salt. Mm -hmm. But in reading the Hebrew on that, I found that there's different interpretations of what that expression might have been or even what the word might have been. It could be different manuscripts. In Islam, we know that it wasn't that she turned back and became salt. Rather, she did not go with him. Mm -hmm. 
And she became one of those disbelievers and she was destroyed by the fire that, that engulfed all of them. The reason I asked is because you mentioned that the prophets, peace be upon all of them, they didn't commit major sins. Mm -hmm. But somebody might come from a Christian background and he finds in the Bible that some major sins are attributed to the prophets. Is this acceptable? We look in the Quran mm -hmm. and we find that Moses, Moses, peace mm -hmm. be upon him, killed a man. Yeah. This is in the Quran. Mm -hmm. That's a major sin. Yes. And that same sin is mentioned in the uh, Bible as well. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a big sin. But we're going to say that that is not by intent because he wasn't trying to kill him. He was trying to hit him. Yeah. The fact that the man died makes it a murder, but it was never an intent to kill. It was an accident. You can't say it's an accident. An accident is like you turn around and just accidentally whack yeah. somebody, you know, or, or you're backing up your car and drive over somebody. That would be an uh -huh. accident. Yeah. But when you're hitting somebody, that is not an accident. The fact they died isn't what you wanted. Mm -hmm. So that it, it's a serious sin, but we're still not going to say it's the kind of sin that somebody set out to do. Yes. This is what will make something a major sin real quick, mm -hmm. that you're doing it blatantly. You wanted to do this thing, and you did it anyway. We mentioned about the devil and how he refused to bow down in front of God because of the creation of Adam. He refused. He said, I'm better than him. I won't bow down to this guy. I'm made from a smokeless fire, and Adam is made from this disgusting uh, clay or fluid or whatever. So that sin from him, even though all he did, he just didn't bow down. And eating fruit for Adam, what kind of sin is that? Mm -hmm. It would have been a major sin. It would have been a horrible, unforgivable sin if he had not turned to a law in repentance. So this is what it's about. It's about recognizing the difference between making a sin and not repenting, even of something very small, like eating something you shouldn't have eaten, or something small, like just not bowing down when you should have bowed down. That, that would not be a big thing if the person said, oh, I didn't bow down, I better bow down. But it was the attitude behind it. Yes. This is one of the things that makes it a real major sin, or even an unforgivable sin, is the attitude with which it was done. So you gave that example that there was not an intent to kill a person, but some of the other things that you might find. Okay, let us to look prophets. to um, Abraham, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. he, he did an example while he was traveling. When he went through Egypt, his wife was with him, and he was told that there was a, a ruler at that time who anytime he wanted a woman, a beautiful woman, that he would uh, take her. And if she's married, just kill the husband. Mm -hmm. So when some people came, they worked for the king, and I guess they were on the lookout for cool chicks. Yeah. I don't know. And he said to her, tell them I'm your brother. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a sin. Yeah. And you could say, well, as we say in Islam, it wasn't actually a falsehood because they were brother and sister in Islam. Mm -hmm. in faith. They believe the same God and so on. So in brother and sister in faith and brother and sister, in, uh, sister coming from Adam. We're all brothers and sisters from Adam. We could, you could say that. You're my brother in humanity. There's no doubt about it because we all came from the same human being. Mm -hmm. But that's rationalization now. Mm -hmm. You're not admitting it, but you lied. Yeah. So he lied and said that. He also broke those people's statues. We mentioned that in a another discussion. So these are things that would be considered sins. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he did repent for those things, and he felt bad about it. Now, if you go and you look at the sin where the things that would be attributed to the prophets where, say, loot was... I see what you're saying. Okay. In the case of the story of loot, the whole thing was that these people were doing some illegal intercourse. Mm -hmm. This is what they were doing. Yeah. So after he uh, escapes from all of that, then according to the Bible story that they have, that Lut is doing something is equal or worse mm -hmm. by doing something with his own daughters. And this is just totally bizarre and totally unacceptable to us as Muslims. We would say that this would disqualify him then from being a prophet. 
because something that is done in the context of uh, you know intercourse yes. this is not the same even as stealing something mm -hmm. because there can be no doubt that what's being done here this is uh, every human knows better yes every human knows that this is not done this is not proper so and to engage in that would disqualify so this would be unprofit like very definitely. So disqualify you as being a prophet. So that's in his case. Now some of so the we don't accept this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, so we talked about Lot now. Is there anything else that we want to mention about him before we go on to the next prophet? The prophet Luke, we don't have a whole lot on him. Yeah. As we might have, for instance, Abraham is mentioned so many times in the Quran. Mm -hmm. As is Moses, Musa, as he's called in Arabic. Peace be upon both of them. Mm -hmm. You'll find that the importance isn't the person, but it is how they handled the circumstances that they found themselves in. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens to them, then what did they do about it? Well, they give a message out, and then this is the rebuttal that came back, and how did they deal with it? And this is what really helps make them stand out from the others. So he, his consistent... Well, his message is consistent with the first man that we talked about. Again, surrender, submission, sincerity, obedience, and peace to the Creator. And he was calling to the same thing. So yes. we have a consistent chain of them delivering the same message, the same way of life, the same deen, calling people to worship the one God, not his creation. Who is the next messenger that we want to talk about now? Again, I don't think it's important to go in chronological order to say mm -hmm. the one who was born next, as some people might think that that is irrelevant, and it may be for them. But I think it's important to look at the subject matter that we're dealing with, and we were talking about being disobedient with some very major sins here. Now, in the case of one who has done some really big mistakes, what did they do about it? We could then go to uh, the prophet... Jonah, and we could talk about him, and he made a big mistake. He left his post. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to stay in Nineveh and give a message to the people, calling them to the belief in one God, believing in one God, and, and being moral. And leave off this statue worshiping, and be, be moral, good people. Deal fair in business with each other, for instance. Mm -hmm. Some of the prophets were sent to people who didn't deal fair in business, and they were told, this is wrong, you have to deal fair. Then, what did these prophets do themselves? Because if he called to a specific thing, he could not violate that. Even if he repented, it would be no good. He wouldn't be the example for that. Mm -hmm. So for sure we know that the prophets who called to, for instance, uh, not dealing in bad business transactions, they themselves could not have been guilty of that. Mm -hmm. The one who's calling people to the, the correct moral... Uh, intercourse or sexual practices, they could not be guilty of having committed that very same sin. Uh -huh. Make sense? Yes. So, we're almost out of time, not going in any chronological order. Who would be the next prophet that, before we come that to That we might like to speak about. Well, you could look to, uh, for instance, Moses, mm -hmm. and we could give a whole program just for Moses. But one of the things about Moses was that, you know, he killed a person. Mm -hmm. This we know, we've just discussed yeah. that. And his killing somebody, and he left and ran off to another place. This is also mentioned in Bible and Quran. Mm -hmm. And for him to have killed somebody and then run away, it might give people the idea that he was running away from the sin of killing somebody. But immediately he was repentant of what he did. The reason he ran away is because he knew that they would kill him. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't time for him to die, so he left. Mm -hmm. But when he did come back, he had to still face up to the fact that he had killed somebody. Yes. And they did not execute him. But it certainly went bad for him when he started calling them to worship one God. How do you call us to worship a God? And you're a murderer. So this is, I think, a, a, a good comparison here to look at. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about Moses his life that would resemble some of the other prophets, some of their teachings, and the way of life now that he called the people to? 
all of them called to the worship of one God, to mm -hmm. believe that God is one, do what God wants you to do on his terms, no doubt. At the same time, not all of them came with scripture the way he did. He was on Turi Sin, or Mount Sinai, where he received direct revelation from Almighty God, which he committed to writing it down and brought down to his people. When he found them worshiping the golden calf, he lost his cool, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he you know, broke these tablets. He was really upset because these people were in direct opposition mm -hmm. to the message he was coming with. And they had fallen back on the false worship of the gods that the Egyptians had been worshiping. Mm -hmm. So was he a, a person who was following, because the Jews, the, Jew, the children of that Israel, Israel yeah. they would consider him their prophet. So was he preaching Judaism or Christianity? He was preaching the message that he got on Mount Sinai. That's and what he was preaching. Was that, again, that surrender, submission, yeah. obedience, sincerity, yeah. and peace, which is summed up? But it had commandments with it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you want to go in chronological order, though, after Abraham, you would go immediately to his son. Mm -hmm. He had a son by the name of Ishmael, or yeah. Ismael. Ishmael. And he was a prophet after Abraham. And then he had another son, Ishak, or Isaac in English. Mm -hmm. Again, another prophet. They were both prophets. And the problems between their mothers is another subject. But one lived with his father, which was Isaac. The other one was left in the desert with his mother at a place called Baca. Mm -hmm. And Baca is mentioned in Genesis. Sounds like Mecca. Well, Becca is also the name used in the Quran to describe the old name of Mecca mm -hmm. and became known as Mecca later. Yeah. That's where we make the pilgrimage, right? Exactly. That is the place. Actually, there's a lot about that we didn't even talk about, the, what happened with his son when he received the dream. And this was a, a, a prophetic dream that he was to sacrifice his son. Now, he waited almost, what, 90 years, something like that, before he ever had a child. This is an amazing thing. Now he has a child. And he's being told by Allah in a dream to sacrifice his son. When he tried to do it, the knife wouldn't cut his son. It wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, you know, sever his neck or anything. So uh, uh, Allah was testing him. Yeah. And then a ram was, came up, a, 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 sh a male sheep, and they slaughtered that instead. Mm -hmm. So we can see this consistent way of life that all the messengers are living. They're striving to be humbly obedient to the commands of their creator. Sometimes it's easier for some people than it is others. Yeah. But that's exactly true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we're almost coming to a close. If you can, before we go on, and we have a few more messengers that we want to cover, we want to talk about possibly uh, Jesus and the last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad in some upcoming shows. But if there's any closing comments and advice that you want to give? One of the prophets that came after Abraham, there was Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac. From Isaac, or Ishak, comes one whose name is Yaqub. Mm -hmm. We call him Jacob. Jacob, Jacob became Israel. Mm -hmm. And Israel is the progenitor of all of the 12 tribes, and from them came all the rest of the people. One of the sons of Israel, or Jacob, is named Yehud. Mm -hmm or Judah, mm -hmm. and it's for him that many people say it comes the name Judaism, because oh. he's the oldest son of Israel. This was a prophet? Some say he was. What was his name? Judah. Judah. Some say he was a prophet, although according to Islam, it doesn't appear to be. This is for anybody... And I'll tell you why, because Joseph, or Yusuf, that I'm named after, is definitely a prophet, mm -hmm. definitely, without a doubt. We didn't talk about him. Where does he fit in this coming after? He has an amazing story that goes along with him. You yeah. can read it in the Bible in Genesis. There's a whole section for him. But also in the Quran itself, chapter 12, it's called Surah Yusuf. Mm -hmm. You can read the whole chapter. It's very interesting. They're almost parallel, except when you get toward the end and you see some very good lessons in the Quran that are missed somehow in the Bible. I mean, for any sincere individual who just uses the tools that the Creator has given him, this brain, and he uses what God had put inside him, this inclination to worship God, you will see, I mean, that these 
men are known through history, and they came with that consistent message to worship the one God. So if somebody says, how would you respond? I've heard this argument that when you mention prophets and God, that this is a way for the elite, the rich, just to control the poor, so they give them this kind of story and these things that we're talking about. How would you refute this quickly? It's true that people have done that very serious uh, subject, that people have manipulated other people by presenting a, a, a religion they made up or corrupting the religion that did come with real prophets, yeah. trying to emphasize certain things or exaggerate or belittle <clears throat> or perhaps add to or take away from in a way that they could manipulate the people's money, their wealth in general, or the power over the society, the political aspects that go along with it. This is well known. People have done that. Mm -hmm. And this is why God keeps sending new prophets and sending in the new message. The same message, but it looks new to the people because they've lost the original. Yes. Yeah. And, he, and this happened so many times, but when the Quran came, Allah promised to protect it, and he has. We still have it exactly today as it was 1,400 years ago. What, That's why it wasn't necessary for any new prophet to come after him. Yeah. Where can people... If they want more information, you have a website that people can visit I have also. one really nice website for people who want to learn something about the Quran itself. It's called Allah's Quran. Don't put an apostrophe. It won't work on there. Just A-L-L-A-H-S-Q-U-R-A-N.com. Allah's Quran.com. And in the cover page, gives you a nice story about the Quran and some basics. You can also read the Quran or have it read to you. There are links for read or listen or even learn the Quran and how to recite it and everything from the Arabic. All of that's available on that website. Thank you. Jazakallah Haidu. Exactly. May the Creator Allah reward you for being with us here today. And thank you for being with us for another episode of The Dean Show. You can catch up and come up to speed and see all the other shows that we've done with Sheikh Estes at thedeanshow.com where we talked about the first prophet Adam and some of the other prophets and today the prophets that we talked about and you can see the consistent message that all of them came with that way that way of submitting surrendering sincerely in obedience and in peace to the one God to the one creator and this is summed up with one word Islam so if you liked what we had to talk about here today you can come and visit us every week here at thedeanshow.com and we'll see you next time inshallah God willing السلام عليكم peace be unto you أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لآيات الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار the DVDs for Dawah, as Allah has said in the Quran, in Surah Nahu 16, 125, Udu ila bil Invite all to the way of your Lord with wisdom, beautiful preaching, and reason with them in ways that are best. And this is a great opportunity for you to take up the obligation, take up the call, as Allah has told you to do, and share this beautiful message with the world, Islam, submission to the one God. Come and see what everyone's talking about. If you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. But the rational idea, the rational explanation is, you do your best. Give up for spring God as one. I will never give up spreading this message. We hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is attended our faith to...
It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask a lot to forgive me. Oh, Allah, you see. Oh, Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave. You're my loving Lord. I'm the one who runs away. Oh, Allah, guide me.